John, do you remember where you are? <sighs> King's College Hospital, <laughs> London. Thank God, thank God. A major trauma centre. Hit the kerb, jackknifed onto the verge. Have we got a good pulse? Have we got an output? You know? One of the busiest a &E departments in the world. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. No, stop! Ah! A place where love. Come on, sir. Let's go. Up you go. No, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and loss. It's, it's all right. Unfold every single day. Ah! Don't cry. Yeah. I will make, go. I will make right. sure mummy stays okay. with you. Will you send? Right, who's not busy? Squeeze that. We can't give up on her. Come on. We've got to be strong for mum. If it is the last bit, hey. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department. Oh! Well done. In just one 24-hour period. I never cease to be amazed at the robustness of human beings. I love you. And the strength of their relationships. Love, it's a reflex. It's what you do. For many of the families, despite the devastation that they may be facing, they give unconditional love. Charles, no? <laughs> no, no, that's a 12 o'clock. Hmm? Valentine's Day in A&E will see 307 people treated. Sorry, mate. Thank you. 12 will be red phones. Cool. Six will have been assaulted. And three will be arrested. Valentine's Day today, I have to remember to stop on my way home and buy some flowers because I'm going to be shot. <laughs> I've tried to cancel that, but I'm completely absolved from any Valentine's Day responsibilities. No, it's lucky. <laughs> well, it's not a very romantic place at the best of times, I suppose. We had a couple of years ago, was a couple that had had a blazing row and uh, we didn't realise at first that this is what happened, but one of the guys came in and he only had a half a finger. And we were like, oh, what did you do there? And it, you know, first of all, I caught it in a door and, and then, you know, some other story. And in the end, it transpired that his partner had bitten his finger off. Relationships in A&E, it can go either one way or the other, I guess. One, it can bring people closer together because they get a fright and then they realise that some things actually really don't matter now my partner's sick. But you do see the odd fight. So this is a bit more serious, I think. 
Is this Hems or is this no, LAS? No, they didn't say. They said a trauma. They called it us. Okay. This is a fellow who has come off his motorbike, we think at about 20 miles an hour, yeah. separated from bikes, little on the ground. He's struck a bollard. They're such um, significant injuries from particularly motorcycles. They just don't have anything to protect them, do they? You go from you know, cruising along at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour to sliding along and then abruptly halting, don't you? So, yeah, anything can happen. You know, there's no crumple zone in a motorbike, so, yeah, they're often really seriously injured. John, 53, motorcyclist, low speed impact with a metal bollard, probably about 20 miles an hour. Father of three, John, came off his motorbike on his way to work. He's basically slid in the floor, right shoulder, right arm have gone into the bollard. So he slid in the floor and then hit the bollard? Then hit the bollard, yeah. He has broken the metal bollard though. Okay. Um, so no yeah. open wounds anyway? No open wounds. The main no. concern we have is that distal pulse. Yeah, um, that's perfect. Thanks a lot. No worries. Is this all pain or? This is anxiety. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Hey, yeah. ah! Ah! Okay, just don't, don't move his right arm again. John's right side has been severely damaged in the accident. Fucking arm! Christ! We've got some, we've got some painkillers coming, John. Hang in there, mate. Hang in there, hang in there, John. Do you have an uh, experience with ketamine? I don't know. You don't, okay. Could Malcolm Tunnicliffe please call Reese on 2397, thank you. And my name is John Moran. How do you think your wife would describe you? Um, chaotic, um, selfish. Hey, John. I know you're in lots of pain, mate. We've got some pain relief coming, all right? Okay. I'm a psychologist. Um, some of the work I do is with pain management and I, I teach particular skills to my clients. Um, none of those skills were of any use to me at that time. Ah. Sorry, John. Guys, guys, can we have a hand just a sec? Thanks, just to brace him getting off the board. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, you got it? Oh, oh, Excellent. Oh, John, hello, John. Sure. Hello, mate. Hi. My, my Hi. name's Malcolm. I'm another one of the doctors with John. In a second, All right. I'm going to yeah. give you a really yeah. strong painkiller yeah. that's going to knock you out. Okay, okay. fine. Yeah, All right. that's great. I just, just need yeah. to explain a couple of things to you. Uh -huh. Okay. It can make you feel a bit funny. Okay. You can have very funny, vivid dreams on it. Okay, tripping out. But sure. Yeah, you're tripping yeah. out. It's yeah. ketamine, basically. Fine, okay. So just remember, yeah, you'll be in a yeah. K hole. So okay. just remember you're in hospital, you're quite yeah. safe. All right? Okay. We can give you something for it if that's really bad. Okay. Right, John, yeah. I'm going to get cracking to start with. We'll okay. give you a little bit to start with. I won't yeah. let them do anything until I'm happy you're away Absolutely. with the fairies. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, I think we need to be a bit quieter around the bed yeah. with the ketamine on board. Well done. 50 milligrams of ketamine, a sedative so strong it's also used as a horse tranquilizer, will knock John out for 20 minutes. Enough time for the team to straighten and plaster his arm. John? John, John. Only then will he be settled enough to be scanned for internal injuries. John, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, boys, do it. He'll, pro he'll probably scream. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. Bloody Valentine's Day, uh, isn't it? But I see a lot of very nice Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, babes. Oh yeah. Did you get lots of cards? Oh, loads, loads. I got a bunch of roses with a card that said I would. Really? 
<laughs> and that's it. And then I would. We're all flesh and blood. We've all got two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. You know what? What appeals to one people, one person doesn't necessarily appeal to somebody else. I love him with all my heart, and, it, and I love him from the inside out. Gary is my soulmate. I trust him with my life. I'm in hospital, Dad. Yeah, up in London. So I'm in here, I'm in at King's Hospital now, and I had a CT scan, and he said I've got a bleed on my brain. Excuse me, blood pressure's too high, Dad. Gary, a 52-year-old paint sprayer, was leaving work when he began to lose feeling down the left side of his body. I heard Gary's car pull up outside. He came in and said he, had, he thought he had a migraine. And when I looked at him, I could see the side of his face had dropped and his eye had dropped. I thought I'd better let you know anyway, because otherwise... I'll keep him informed. And uh, I'll probably be here a couple of three days. I don't know if they're going to... They gave me some stuff just now. We've been doing all these sort of reflex tests and stuff. And, I mean, he called it a bleed. Uh, I've got a bleed on the brain, I suppose. That's what he class as a stroke, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's true, hang on. He, you know what he's like, he didn't want nothing done. As soon as he came in for work, I phoned for, for the ambulance straight away. I could see... I had to keep my head, because if I'd panicked, then I know Gary would have panicked. So I had to sort of keep my wits about me. But deep down inside, I was uh, absolutely petrified. All right, then. So I'll, uh, um, I'll, right? I'll bring you tomorrow. Dead feeling all right? Yeah, he wants to, he said, are you all right? Yeah, he says, he's all right, he's a bit upset. Yeah. I met Gary at a biker's rally in Chillum, in Kent, 10 years ago. The night I met him, I was out with a, a girlfriend of mine, and when we saw the bike club that he belongs to, um, my friend laughed and went to me, my God, just avoid all eye contact, don't even look at them, um, because they had a bit of a reputation at the time. And then, of course, when he actually did walk over and speak to me, I couldn't be rude. That night, Gary walked me to my car, um, and as I, I got in the car, he, he actually asked if he could kiss me. My friend sort of like is going, oh my God, you know, I told you to avoid all eye contact, don't kiss him. But he, he sort of like put his head in the window and said, can I just kiss you goodbye? Um, and I said, yes, and he kissed me. And, and then he, he just said, oh, I love you. And I looked at my friend as we drove off, I looked at my friend and I went, I think I've just found a raving lunatic. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hi. I'm Kirsty, I'm one of the nurses. Keep an eye on your blood pressure, it's still a little bit high. Yeah. But don't worry, we'll keep an eye on it and make sure you're trying to keep it. Gary is being given medication to control the bleed in his brain. The first 24 hours are critical, so he needs close monitoring by King Stroke Specialists. If I could go now, I'll go now. I just hate hospitals and doctors. I love you. Valentine's Day doesn't mean so much to me now as it did in the in the past years. In the past years, Valentine's Day was a big thing. Cards, flowers, and if it came on a weekend, I'd take her away for the weekend. But um, now it's, it's just another date, really. Unless, of course, if somebody's birthday, if a young lady has a birthday, okay, I might take her for a meal. With her husband, of course. Are you here on your own? 
Well, no one's ever on their own, really. No. 84 year old Ronald has come into A&E after being bitten by his dog Benji. When I was brought up, we used to respect the ladies. At least that's how I did it with my wife. <laughs> Kathy was the first one that I really fell for. We were married 50 years. You've obviously got someone looking after you with your, with your nice... You've got someone looking after you with your nice, tidy dressing Oh, that's room. all right, yeah. And you were seen here last night? Yeah, seen here, in there. Yeah. And they you... told me to come back at 10 o'clock this morning. Who did? Was it definitely... Me Are you meant to be at Fracture Clinic? I don't know. It's a bite. Oh, Dog bite. Have you met Miss... Preparing. She was five foot... Three. Uh, she was a little bit plump, although she'd hate me to say that. Um, she had beautiful hair. I think the nicest thing you can say about her was that we loved each other. Let's look you up on the computer. Hold that for me. Because oh. I don't... I think you might... I think you might be meant to be at Fratch Clinic or something, because you were seen here last night. No, Billy you... loves me. What's your... <laughs> Tell me your full name. Uh, Ronald Kane. K-A-N-E. Ronald Kane. Okay. She tripped over in the previous flat we lived in. She hit her head on the... Uh, one of the wooden gems and she had a stroke. She was one of those people who detested hospitals. She was afraid of them, but well, most people are anyway, especially when you get to our age. So um, I used to go there and uh, look after her myself. Mr. Kane, do you want to come through? You want me? I do. I was sitting with her, and a nurse came in and said, uh, I want to wash her face. I said, OK, would you leave us, please? So I walked out the room, and within five minutes, the nurse came out and said, I'm sorry, Ron, she's gone. Uh, that's it. Finney. All you have are memories. I see. Oh, Jesus. Mm, I'd like some McDonald's French fries. No, no McDonald's, no, no, no French fries. No, just the French fries. I love McDonald's French fries. I wouldn't mind a Big Mac either. Ah. With some sweet and sour sauce. Hello, is that the radiology? Yeah, hello there. We've got a, a fella in here, trauma. He's, he's Delta for the day. Um, for Valentine's Day, he was trying to climb out the uh, climb up the side of his flat and got as high as the, the first floor balcony and lost his footing. He's fallen backwards and on the way down, he's managed to hit a retaining wall. Do you ever get any Valentine cards by people at work? By people that I work with or from patients? Uh, patients or people at work. Oh, okay. No, I get surprisingly, well, I say surprisingly little in the way of cards for my patients. Maybe I'm not expecting too much. Um, maybe I give them too much ketamine and they forget who I am. It's been over an hour since John came off his motorbike. None of his family yet know he's in A&E. So, John, yes, mate. So, so far, so good. I mean, we know that you've got a broken bone in your arm here, OK? Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, kind of bent out of shape when you came in, causing all that pain, all right? Right. But we gave you a really, really strong medicine there that kind of almost pushed, put you to sleep. Can you remember? 
I don't remember what. Yeah, can you remember? We, we gave you a medicine, a very strong medicine, and we've, we've made this arm in the right shape again. Oh, you... Yeah. Oh, you put it in the right shape. Yeah. Oh, well yeah. done. Yeah. So it's in a, it's in a plaster now. Um, now what? it's, it's you did all that? Yeah. In a plaster? Exactly right. What? So it's... <laughs> How did you do that? What time is it? It's... It only took about 20 minutes. But look... 20 minutes? Exactly. <laughs> look, it's, it's not... No, stop talking. It's not fixed. It's stop talking. Me or stop you? Talk, you. <laughs> stop talking. You got what a question? It? It's... Oh, there it is. 11, 10.40. 10.40. 10.40. Mm. Right, okay. You've been so, with us for about an hour. Fucking hell. Do you want me to explain some more? <sighs> yeah. Okay, so this arm, it's not fixed yet, but at mm. least it's in the kind of roughly the right space, uh, the right place, and that's going to have helped a lot with your pain, I'm hoping. How, how is the pain in your arm? The overriding thing that has always been a problem is riding a motorbike. I've never agreed with that. I've always worried, but I learned very early on um, that there was nothing I was going to be able to do or say. He would placate me that it was safe and that our quality of life was much better if he rode a bike because he would have more time to spend at home. The procedure that we've done on your arm is, is not the be-all and the end-all. There's, there's um, a bit more work to do there, but at least it's a bit there's more a bit comfortable more, for you. There's a bit more work to do where? In, in, with, with your arm, with the, with the broken bones in your arm, OK. But at, at least at the moment, I'm hoping that we've got you more comfortable. Have you had many motorcycle accidents? Um, not accidents, necessarily. I mean, you, you'll come off if the road is wet or, or whatever, you might slip on some oil. Um, you might get cut up by a, by a, a motorist. Um, I've broken scaphoid. Um, I broke my ankle a couple of times. Look, um, you've got some, some more x-rays coming up, just of your chest and of your pelvis, all right? Yeah. Um, then we've got to go through uh, the motions of making sure nothing else is injured, so x-rays of your neck as well, all right? Yeah. The bike has been an overriding shadow because he gets on it every morning and he goes off to wherever he's going and um, there is always that fear. In the majority of accidents, you know, you'll arrive home that day, you know, that eyes will be rolled to, to heaven and you just get on with it. Um, but in this instance, the, there was, you know, it was clearly a lot more serious. So you think, right, um, this, is gonna, this is gonna cause me problems. crashed his motorbike three hours ago. Anything? No. With his arm in a cast and his pain under control, he can now be scanned. Breathe in. Hold your breath. I really wonder about his spine as well. Is it? No, it doesn't look like anything. No, I've got away with that. Hold your breath. Scans show there is no organ damage. I need to see my star sign to see if it's worth waking up today, please. I'm, uh, I'm Cancer. Right. What are you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm see you March. Yeah, February 26th. February 26th, yeah. It's coming Around up. The corner. It's coming up like yeah, what are you turning? Are you? 29. 29. What? You're only 29? It's because of the Maybe. facial hair. That is stupid. I do worry about getting old because time is going so fast and it's going faster and faster as the years go on. In my old age, I hope I'm one of those elderly little ladies who still loves to wear heels and wear makeup and be all dainty and have some little old man next to me still highly in love and that's what I hope for because I love seeing the couples that are like that. They're just so sweet. And it's always nice to make an elderly person laugh as well. I had one say to me yesterday, um, 
Stop treating me so good or else I'll trade my wife in. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Mr. Kane. Hello. Hello. How are you? Was your dog that bit, bit you or a different dog? Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't let any other dog bite me. Oh, it was your dog. That's <laughs> your own dog. That's fine. No, actually, what happened is I was at the computer and um, he's got a ball. Yeah. And it's a rope ball and he jumps up, you know, and then I throw it. Yeah. Well, I was computing and the ball, one of the strands of the ball got caught on my finger. And of course, she jumped up for the ball, got excited. not knowing. And that's what happened. You're yeah. not getting them put down, though, are you? Pardon? He's not being put down, no. Put down? Yeah, you're not putting them down. Oh, God, no, it was an accident. It's He's been very contrite. He's been hiding behind the settee since he done it. He knows. He knows he's in trouble. <laughs> Pardon? He knows, yeah. He does know, yeah. First thing Benji does. Comes down here and looks for his toy. Hello. Then I got to spend the rest of the day throwing the damn thing to him. I've tried to train him, and they say, well, send him to one of these training schools. Well, that's all very well, but I think that would change his personality too much. I'd, I'd rather he stays as he is, mad, like me. Ah, what were you in? Uh, the RAF and the RAF and Army. I was a ruler for seven and a half years, uh, Princess Mary's nursing service, and um, two years in Korea with the Army. Do you want to put that in the bin? Pardon? Do you want to put that in the bin? Thank you. Yeah. When you get to a certain age, well, say my age, uh, a lot of people just sit in the armchair and say, well, I'm too old to do this or I'm too old to do that. Well, I don't agree. I read in the paper and uh, on the radio they were having this uh, gay pride parade. So I thought, well, I might as well go along and see that because it isn't a militant one. Everybody was going to be cheerful. So I went down Haymarket and where I stood, there were three or four young gay chaps there, and we were having a laugh, having a joke. So we just need to clean this a little bit, because you've still got bits of cotton wool and gauze stuck in well, there. That's what I said. I said, I said, I said, I said I, I, there was something in there. I didn't know if it was just a bit me of or... Either. I've got a dressing gown. And suddenly this crowd of very large gentlemen came dashing across the road towards me, they open up and there's boy George standing next to me. So I, I looked and I said, hello, Mr. O'Dowd. And he looked rather surprised. So I said, may I take a picture? He said, I haven't got a camera. I said, I've got one. So he got one of his cohorts to take a photograph of us. He turned out quite well, actually. He was quite a nice person to speak to. How long have you had your dog for? Oh, well, I've, I had um, my first dog um, six years ago after Kathy. Okay. I didn't want to be on my own, so I got a dog. Yeah. And she was good. If I'm feeling a bit low, I say, Kath, what would you do? Or if I'm undecided about anything, Kath, what do you think I should do? And then at night you say, my night, darling, God bless. Some people can go into a shell. They'll just keep there, contained within themselves. Other people, they can sort of throw it off. Not in their minds, but in their personality. And I think that's what I did. I just threw it off and said, get on with your life, Ron. She's not coming back. She wouldn't want you to be unhappy, be miserable. Do what you want. And I did. And here I am now. OK. See you later. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Ah. 
as long as she needs me, I know where I must be. I'll cling and steadfastly. <laughs> I'm not happy, I'm just fed up being bloody miserable. <laughs> These are my favourite flowers. To have in the house, anyway. If you're going to buy me flowers, that's they're quite cheap, so... <laughs> I'd probably want something a bit more expensive than that if you were going to buy me them. But if I was going to buy myself some, just... Just, so just yeah, just to brighten, brighten the house up. Oh, yeah. See if I've got any pictures of flowers that I'd be delighted to receive. Yep, they would do. Just, I'm not asking you to get me flowers. But if you were going to get me some. John, uh, we're getting a bit more morphine, and ASAP we'll get these blocks away and have you sitting up a little bit. All right. You all right? What's going to happen now? Well, the, have you been told about the results of the imaging? No, no. So far with the plane films, I mean, you've got some pretty nasty breaks in the forearm here, OK? Um, it's going to require an operation, OK? So that'll be under the orthopaedic team. You've also broken the, uh, the shoulder blade, OK, the scapula. And um, it's broken in a few different pieces. And the reason it's so sore around your shoulder here is that it looks like, you know how there's a ball and socket joint? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the, the socket of the shoulder, um, I, I gather from the CT, uh, there might be a, a break through that as well as other parts of that shoulder, of that shoulder blade. So it's pretty, pretty badly broken. Yeah. Um, and simply for the reasons of analgesia, you're going to have to, to stay in. I mean, not just for the fact that you need an operation, but you know, I think you're going to be pretty uncomfortable with this shoulder blade thing. Mm -hmm. But if I can point out a bright side there, is that your shoulder blade and all the, all the big muscles that kind of um, pad over that shoulder blade have taken the brunt of this, and it looks on first glance that your scan of your chest is okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit, a bit like the crumple zone of a car, if you like. It's all kind of nuts and bolts and bones and, and things, mm -hmm. rather than the, you know, the important stuff on the inside. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, do, do you have any questions? No, that's all Yeah, great. yeah. Great. Listen, and as soon as we know a little bit more, as soon as we know the scan results, I'll come back and have another chat. Okay. All right. Thank okay, you. no worries. Okay. Right. And was hoping I would get away with a cast. You know, the cast would be okay. I could manage that. Um, surgery, mm, not so good. That means plates and extended periods of recovery and so on and so forth. My partner and my daughter were in Muscat, in Oman. And it was an experience for us. We hadn't been to the Middle East before and it was all very different. So we were having a great, you know, a great time. So John, now my name is Ibrahim. I'm one of the other orthopedic doctors. Essentially your forearm fracture is what we're going to fix today, hopefully. Now, this is the consent form. Okay. Mm -hmm. With any operation, there will be risks sure. involved. You will right. definitely have post-operative pain. Okay. You will definitely be ha left with a scar. Okay. Mm -hmm. The incision will probably be about that long, so about, about almost 10 centimeters in length. You might have a scar either side or just one scar. Okay. Now, I'd like you to sign here. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right. -handed? So, are you able to sign with your left hand? Right. And now, if I give you that and I show you where to sign, yep, yeah. doing very well. 
Fantastic, that will do, absolutely. All right, that's it, sorted. Fantastic. No problem. You too. I needed my sons to know. And I, f I phoned um, the eldest lad. Alex. And asked him to make sure that the youngest lad was OK. <laughs> Uh, a few breaks. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Now, you just need to sort Joe out. Just make sure he doesn't get upset, yeah? Just one more thing, mate. There's no need for your mum to know about anything. Don't spoil her holiday. She, she's expecting a call from you on Thursday or Friday. So she's not expecting to from you today. So there's no need for anyone to call her. So I told Joe, don't call mum. There's no need for it. OK, mate? Thanks a lot. Bye. down on one knee and he just said, will you marry me? And she had tears in her eyes, it was just... Oh, it was lovely. It got down on one knee and everything, it was absolutely amazing. It was, man. Gary's left side was affected by the stroke. Touch your nose. But his coordination is already improving. Yeah. That's what it's made down, isn't it? That's sort of buggered me a bit now, though, isn't it? Well, it's just giving you a little bit of a warning to slow down a bit. You're not the big rufty tufty biker that you thought you were. Do you like to scare me, don't you? I love you. When you've had a stroke, it makes you realise the things you used to worry about, some of the things you ain't worth worrying about. The other day I was in uh, Bexley Heath and uh, I heard this lady talking to this old, old lady. And uh, I was sitting there, Tracy had just gone to the toilet and I was sitting there with a the bag and uh, she come out, she goes, what's up with you? And I, was, I was looking in the bag. I had tears coming down my face, I did. And what happened was, I heard this lady speaking to this old lady. She, she said, how are you today? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. It's my birthday today. I'm 74. And uh, she said, oh, that's nice. Anything, any plans? She said, no, I've got no plans. And of course, all oh, right, I'll see you later. Then she went off and I thought, that old lady ain't got anyone, that old lady. Though. So we walked off and we got around the corner and I said, I want to buy her some flowers. So I bought her some, we bought her some flowers and I went back there and I said to Tracy, is she still there? And she said, yeah, she's still sitting there. And I didn't know until I got back, because I'd only seen the back of her. When I got around the front, she was blind. So, <laughs> a bit of joke. <coughs> so, uh, I went up to her and I said, is it, oh, sorry, I wasn't earwig. And I said, I just overheard that it was your birthday. And uh, she said, yeah, hello. She said, yeah, it's my birthday today. I said, I've just got you a couple of flowers, if that's all right. Oh, thank you, she said. Thank you ever so much. And uh, as I walked off, I looked back and I see her smiling. That made my day. My idea of romance. Gary Mitchell, I suppose. And our sex life is very healthy. In fact, um, none of his friends will ring us on a Sunday morning because they think Sunday morning is our morning. <laughs> and are they right? Yes, they are. <laughs> Sod boot fairs. <laughs> Hi. 
How long do they say it's going to be? Lord knows. 21-year-old Anton has been brought in by his mates. He is suffering from mild chest pains. Oh, hi. Hi. See you later. Facebook me. Don't say she's really pretty. No, oh, she's actually nice. Do you believe in love? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> gonna expose me here. Do I believe in love? Yes, I do believe in love. Have you ever been in love? I don't know, I doubt it. I don't know what love is, really. I mean, I think love is probably being with someone that you know can annoy you, but at the same time, you still want to be with them. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, I've been in love three times. Oh, Maggie, I, I, I wanted to cry. It was lovely. Oh, she put it on Facebook. I should have said I was there, I saw it. Where's my balloon? I don't know. Where's my balloon? All the balloons gone missing. She gonna have to take my one. Who's there? Relationships can be very tricky, and they have to be. Well, not they have to be. They can be. Hard work. Just so nice and still there for the sec. G'day. John is going oh, yeah. straight to theatre. Alrighty. Where he'll have two hours of surgery. Okie dokie. See whether you feel a bit more comfortable. How's that? Is that all right? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Nice little change, huh? I genuinely had no idea whilst I was away. I did speak to John on the night of the accident. All the very best, eh? Yeah. Yeah, take care. Very much. Yeah, no worries, John. All the best. Well, I called her from, from my hospital bed and just said that, you know, everything's OK, but um, I'm not going to be able to pick you up at the airport. So I just thought I'd um, keep the artifice going a little bit longer until, uh, until I got home. See you later, John. All the best, eh? Hey? Take care. When we got back to Heathrow, there was a taxi with our name there. Still no idea, and it was only once we pulled up at the house late on the Saturday evening, my older son was here, which was unusual, um, that I knew something wasn't quite right. I'd asked the eldest lad to be at home, just in case, you know, Francis was distressed, you know, just to provide support. Alex dealt with it quite well. My son, he just said, no, you're not to go into a panic. So he'd calmed me down and I had a couple of minutes before I actually came up to see John. And then she came up and she saw me in the bed. Um, I mean, by that time, I, I'd, I'd recovered my sense of humour. So I just thought it was um, quite an, an, an interesting situation. Were you angry? Yes. But living with someone who rides a bike, day in, day out, I've always been concerned that one day I was going to get a call that something terrible had happened. And I think my feeling of relief that that's it now, he didn't suffer any head injuries. And there's, you know, that was always there. And he, he can't go on a bike again. And I don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm one of the fortunate ones that is not going to have to deal with that.
you see yourselves together in another 25 years? As long as he doesn't ride a bloody bike again. <laughs> Can you remember what happened? No. Look, she's got a head injury. She's got a head injury. It is a marathon, it's not a sprint once you've had a serious head injury. You know where you are right now. Queering a loss of consciousness, she doesn't really be into it at all. And it's the relatives who carry the burden of that. It's going to be all right. 